In many of my repair videos, I use my favorite UEI meter, and in most of those videos, I also have links in the description to this meter, and then people click on them, and then they do some shopping, they find this meter, a better price, they buy it, they receive the meter, they start using it, and then they realize, wait a second, this meter is not really the same as the one that he had. So they come back and they comment and say, hey, what's going on? And the thing is, this meter right here, there's four of them, four different models that all look pretty much the same. So to avoid any further confusion, I decided to make this video and explain what the difference is between all four of those. So whenever you buy one, you look at that little model number and you know exactly what you're getting. So the one I have is a DL379B. I usually use this 389, but I lost that one. So now I got this one temporarily until I can get the 389 again. And there's four of them, like I said. There's DL369, DL379, DL379B, and then there's the DL389 True RMS or TRMS. Not only do four of these meters look alike, but they also use the same instruction manual as well. And for the technicians watching right now that may be talking to the screen and telling me that fluke meters are the best, don't worry, I do have some fluke meters and I do use them sometimes. But for the most part, it is more convenient for me to use this UEI meter that I have simply because it has all the features that I need loaded into one meter so I don't need to have two different meters. So let's talk about what's different in all four of those models. The biggest difference is between DL369 and 79 and 89. So there's not much difference between 79 and 89, but there is a big difference with the 69. So the 69 model is about 70 bucks on Amazon. The 79 model is about 120, and the 89 model is about $200 on Amazon. And the reason I go with Amazon is because all the prices are kind of standardized, I guess, per se, and Amazon just has everything. But that doesn't mean they have the cheapest prices. Of course, you can probably get meters cheaper at Harbor Freight, eBay, and other places like those. And since the DL369 is the cheapest, there is a big difference uh, between that one and the other ones. And the difference between them is the biggest one, it doesn't have the temperature jack, the K style input, which is right here on this meter, the 79. And it also doesn't have the temperature setting on the rotary switch either. So you can't plug in a pipe clamp into your meter, or if you have a little thermocouple, you can't plug that in either. So the temperature function is the only function that it's missing, but besides that, it's also missing the magnet in the back, which I think is really important. I like to be able to stick my meter anywhere while I'm working so my hands are free. It also doesn't have the light, which comes in kind of handy once in a while. The light right here. The DL369 does not have that. Also, the screen does not have a backlight so it does not light up. So having a backlit display is also very helpful in dark places. So I really enjoy the backlit display, the little work light, and since I do use the temperature setting quite a bit, my meter does have to have that temperature setting, otherwise I'll get a different meter. I've had the DL369 for a while when I melted one of my meters, and I didn't, I didn't like it at all. I mean, maybe for a homeowner that meter is good, because they don't really need the temperature function. It has all the other basic functions like voltage, amps, resistance, microfarads. It has all of that, so if you're a homeowner, the DL369 is just fine. But if you're a technician, then having that temperature setting is a good thing to have. And the last thing that the 369 can't do is it can't detach the head. So the head comes off on the 79 and the 89, and you can put a narrow amp hook on here to get into narrow spots to check amp draws. I believe that hook has been discontinued anyway, so this feature is kind of useless at this point where the head can come off. But it is there, and only 79 and 89 can do that. The 69, you can't pull the head off like that. So that's what the DL369 is missing. Now, moving on to 379, you know how there's 379 and 379B? The difference between those two is very minor. I think they made some internal change in them. And other than that, the only physical thing that they changed in the meter is that the 379B 
has two of these lights right here. And that's for the non-contact voltage detector, which is up here. You can stick that in an outlet, for example, or near some wires and it works like a voltage pen. But the 379B is the only model that has the detection for the high and the low. All the other meters, I mean the meters that look like this, they don't have that. Only the 379B is the one that has that. Otherwise, besides the light, there's really nothing else different between the 379 and the 379B. And that's about it. And it also has the temperature functions, it has the magnet, it has the work light, and the 389 has all of that as well. And moving on to 389, the 389 stands apart from all of the other ones. And the biggest difference between 379 and 389, physically they look pretty much the same. There's nothing different. But internally, it has the true RMS software installed in it. So whenever it measures voltage, it uses the true RMS instead of the averaging RMS that the 69 and the 79 use and other averaging meters. So why the true RMS is very important is because back in the day, all the older equipment, it used pretty much all the components to use steady voltage. So those AC waves, they were all steady. But nowadays with the modulating ECM and variable speed stuff, that voltage wave can have irregularities in it. And the average meters, they don't always pick that up and they give you a false reading. I was gonna try to explain that in this video in detail, but it's kind of a big topic. So instead, I found a good article on this topic that explains what true RMS is and why it's important. And I'll link that in the description as well. So if you want more info on the true RMS, just read up on that, especially if you found what I explained kind of confusing. Just read that and I think you'll have a better understanding. So to summarize, the DL369 does not have a backlit display. It does not have a magnet in the back. It does not have a work light. It does not have the temperature function and the head does not detach, which does not really matter. And it's not true RMS. The 379 has all the functions and all the magnets and lights and stuff, but it is not true RMS. The only one that has true RMS is the 389. And of course, it also has all the features and functions on it as well. So if you're a homeowner, the DL369 is still a great meter for that price. All it's really missing is the temperature function, which most homeowners and DIY people are not gonna be using anyway. If you're a technician, you do wanna have that temperature feature, but for most homeowners, DIY and handyman, a DL369 meter is good, although it does lack some of the handy features like the magnet, the work light, and the backlit display. And the 379 is basically an upgrade of the 369. And the 389 is the one that has the true RMS. And if you're a technician and you want to use one meter for everything, then I would recommend getting the 389, spending the extra money. It is a really nice meter. Or if you have a couple meters, if you ever need to use something with true RMS, you could just use your other meter that has the true RMS feature in it. Well guys, and that is all I had for you. I hope this will help you have a better understanding of what you're buying. So now when you look at these numbers, DL369, 79, 89, you'll actually know what the difference between them is and what you're getting for your money. Now, if you have one of these meters and you've been using them for a while, please let us know in the comments below how you've been liking it. And if I've missed any features or any highlights about those meters that I did not cover in this video, please let us know in the comments below as well. Or if you have other meter suggestions, those are welcome as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, what do you call a flock of geese? The right answer is a gaggle. So I'm gonna show you a picture of a gaggle and in that picture, there's a fox that is trying to get to them and eat them. So I'll leave the picture up for about 30 seconds and let's test your powers of observation. Let's see how fast you can find that fox. Afterwards, I will show you the answer. Good luck.